adults in their mid to early, almost sometimes their early teens. Right, 14 up, to 20. Up here, you have a marriage pattern in which men and women both marry late. Men usually 28 to 30, women 25 to 27. Uh, this was because of what we were talking about at the beginning, control of marriage. You didn't let them set up a household until they could demonstrate they could. Because if you let poor married. people marry, you'll have too many poor people. Yes, that was it. You'll have lots of poor kids. Yes. Poor kids grow kids. up to be Well, and poor, poor kids people. become a problem for the government. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, they don't go to so, the Hmm? Well, it's the, the, the government. The church was part of the government. Right. Yeah. So, the huh? government doesn't necessarily do it. The church does it, but it is a problem for the yes. government. Mm -hmm. And the the prime ministers or whoever is, you know, yeah. the ministers are having to worry about. Yes. Oh no, we have this yes. many poor so, kids. You know, you have here as a result of this fewer children per marriage. Right. Marrying at a younger age results. If the bride isn't too young, usually, in more children. Now, midwives at the time knew, and they yelled and they screamed and they wrote that it was a very, very bad idea for a girl under the age of 18 to become pregnant, and it's better if you wait until she's 20. And they repeated this ad infinitum over and over in all of the literature. Or whether it did any good, we do not know, but they certainly knew that an immature pelvis was much more likely to lead to the death of the mother in her first And the child. And the child. Uh, but basically, they knew that. Again, it was a matter of social custom and how much you do. Uh, you're not going to have a lot to do about this in the USE for the simple reason the marriage customs were already they had virtually no forms of chemical birth control or anything. It was basically the rhythm method. Uh, basically, yeah. there's uh, a lot. They did. Or a Hail Mary pass. Uh, no, more, <laughs> no, more than you would think. More than you would uh, think. They used sponges. They used vinegar. They used various forms of uh, douches. Uh, just there, the there was some herbal. Very closely, it was mainly the well, rhythm method. You have method. to realize no. the purpose no, rhythm they rhythm wanted. In the 20th century. They right. wanted to have children. The purpose of marriage essentially was to have children. That's but you said why earlier they were preg impregnated like basically every 11 months. It's they, in the where they're not nursing. When they're not nursing. Okay, nursing itself yeah, is, a, not, is a birth it's about, control. It's every tw uh, 33 it's months if she's been nursing two years. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. Uh, there's, it's not on in Europe, but it's in uh, Quebec for the colonial period. Uh, the uh, University de Laval and uh, a couple of others have a consortium uh, called the Programme de Recherche Démographique, uh, which you can access on your computer. In English, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a program, the program for demographic, demographic research. research. Okay. Uh, and uh, <laughs> It's bilingual, as everything okay. is legally in and quick, Canada, so yeah. you can get at it. Uh, but they have put in to a computer every vital event that has taken place in Quebec from the first settlement. They're now up to almost 1,800. Uh, every marriage, every burial, every death, they maintain, they maintain every population census, record for that. they yeah. have. Well, what is it? It's as they say, you know, you marry a French Canadian and his family tree makes you look, yours look like a sapling. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, but scary. basically, <laughs> Not uh, my. The, what they have developed from this is a thing called the maximum natural pattern of population increase. That is, Quebec had a bracing climate, yes. enough food, uh, plenty of land, so there was no need to artificially limit marriages. Uh, basically, the really nilly. Basically, well, especially when it got cold, they could. Yeah. Uh, 
marry and aside from the tendency of husbands to go off for to training, disappear yeah uh, for three and four years at a time uh, you have a pattern in which basically 8,000 original founding couples now have something over 8 million descendants in the province of Quebec, 6 million descendants elsewhere in Canada, and almost 10 million in the, the rest United of the States. Uh, they, so have, breeding they have, they uh, have, you know, there were deaths and remarriages, but basically... But they met Native Americans along the way, too, so not, some of that... Not, that, not as much as you would think. Not yeah. as much as you would think. Really? This is, you, see, they're not it's counting in the... Uh, events, nomadic... No, they're not counting in the events that occurred outside of the province of Quebec. That is Saskatchewan, Manitoba, the Red River, the you marriages know, that took Jericho place Jericho out there. They're not in the program. So they're not uh, counting most of the Métis? No, so these are all direct them. European descendants. Yes, these, this is the maximum pattern of natural population increase. It's not counting what the guys did when they were off Perfect. in the fur trade. It's not counting what the Métis did when they married one another. This is Quebec province. I see. These were recognized. Rec yeah. <laughs> Legal. <laughs> Legal. You think most of the social and governmental control made for humans, they tend to breed and breed well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, without major epidemics, without a lot of food constraint. Uh, it's pretty pure up there, uh, you know, as, you know, like Europe. Well, I remember what uh, Madame Riedesel said during the revolution as she discovered the joys of frozen food throughout the winter. All we have to do is wrap it in paper and put it in the attic and it will freeze and it's just as good in March as it was in September. <laughs> no, she, she, was, she was, she was, <laughs> well, did not thaw. Yeah, <laughs> in the Little thaw, Ice Age, right. you were lucky to, for it to thaw by uh, May. But so. basically, uh, again, you're dealing, you're, they're going to be dealing with population increase as much with social patterns as they're going to be dealing with uh, purely medical or uh, sanitation things. And anybody who doesn't factor that in to figuring a Malthusian pattern. Eric, as you've probably noticed, uh, reading through his various books, is a real fan of early marriage. Uh, he marries off these really young couples to one another. He wanted to marry off Mark and Susanna, and I just dug my heels in in the Bavarian crisis, and that no way, shape, or form am I going to do that. Uh, <coughs> Her mother is not going to allow it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, basically, you know, he'll figure uh, industrial revolution, factory work, wages, uh, Younger and more people will be getting married, but this will be a decade or out, so out in the future from where we are now. It's not an immediate impact. Uh, they're not going to turn around and find the population has doubled in a decade. Yes? I was just going to say that Eric once mentioned that he found that one of the disadvantages of, of getting all these heroines married off at roughly the same time was they all got pregnant at roughly the same time, which posed some. St uh, storytelling inconveniences later on. <laughs> Just imagine what it would have been like for the women if they were real. <laughs> Jim, um, one thing I, that also is, I think would be important is, you're correct, I, I, I agree with you that most of this was social control that was, in fact, it wasn't that half the women were dying in childbirth, also half them are not. But I think the other thing with the germ theory and is you're going to have a, a greater trust of doctors. It doesn't appear that you go to the doctor to die. You go to the hospital to die. It was a big thing in the 19th century. Hospitals weren't places you sent people to live. They were the, the last resort for many people. They were hospices rather than hospitals. Exactly. And they were more so because where did the trash from a hospital go? You think it's infectious to poop in your basement. Where's all the poop from a hospital? What is that? So if you could trust medicine, trust it to do a good job, I think over time you're going to see a, a, a 
population increase from that people aren't going to accept. Well, hospitals kind of took care of their waste problem by having incinerators built in. Uh, that's very recent. That's yeah, that's, that's, recent that's, that's uh, the late 19th that's century. Early, they started installing incinerators. Yeah. The, the story about Florence Nightingale and the elevator shaft and that hotel being used as a place to deposit. I don't know how apocryphal that is. Probably but it was not true. At all. At all. Probably not at all. Had sewage problems and waste problems, bloody bandages. Uh, what do you do with? What do you do with the severed limbs? And uh, actually, you you did burn them. They well, had piles, you, you, not, I mean, like pyres, not piles of but, pyres. But they actually took them out on the wagon, on the uh, debris the wagons, and burned them out. If they had a chance, the with burning limbs, because people aren't going to put up with the smell of burning. Well, in the countryside, though, I mean, you have designated places. Like she but I'm just saying, so many parts of London. <laughs> We've got about five, five minutes. We've got about five minutes, Ivor. Well, I just want to say that the increase in fertility rates well preceded the big increases in medicine. You were seeing right. in some of the countries of Europe substantial birth in boosts in birth rates and substantial improvement in mortality in the 1820s and 1830s. And you know, you that wasn't attributable to germ theory of disease. Uh, it's certainly not attributable to major new drug introductions and things like that. So other factors had to be lost. Well, it was actually increased food production in Central and Southern Europe, where you had famines in Ireland, and Scotland. You had, and you had we get, much we greater end up going back to what we southern southern in the first place, loss of government control over marriage, simply more, more pregnancy. Lost well, church control Well, more, you know, no, well, in Ireland, in Ireland, the church basically controlled marriage, but they didn't want to limit limit it. Right. They controlled it, but they did not limit it's it. It's like Catholicism despises birth control. <laughs> well, Protestantism at this point wasn't wild about birth control either. No. Basic, the basic purpose, you know, you pe the people stood there. And the, they purpose their their the purpose and the of life. The purpose of marriage. The purpose of marriage was the procreation children. of children. Right. right, and protection and and um, rearing of children. But in those days, in, in, in the there farming, was a need. There was a logical need for it because you had a high mortality rate. Well, the other thing is, in a farming society, you need farm workers. You grow them. Right. Yeah. Your right. your kids. All hands. You, your <laughs> hands provided the mm -hmm. provided the well, farm yeah, stuff in like that. Early and, industrial is and the and same you thing. See that. I, I, I don't know if it's true or not, but when when I was in college. Professor was trying to, to influence all, or, or get our attention for all these you know, classroom full of young guys. Said one in Puritan New England, one out of every three children born was confessed in church to be conceived illegitimately. <laughs> no. that, 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 that's including no. all of the all of the larger families. Now, now again, I, like I say, I'm not sure how accurate it was, but one of the things associated with that was we got into some of the, the dating practices and stuff like so, that uh, in the in Pennsylvania Dutch. It was very, very, very high percentage of pregnant brides. <laughs> Part of the deal was once you got engaged. You were expected to prove that you were a fertile wife so that you could provide the farmhands to set up the successful farm. He is right in his facts, but he is wrong in his rationale. Betrothal was a legally binding contract. In other words, which is why uh, they were all 